Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Roger Destrudy. And as you know, every month we strive to bring a different department to you to talk about the roles and responsibilities of county government. And we have a new face before us today. I'm very pleased to introduce Rochelle Valeski. Welcome, Rochelle. Thank you very much, Adam. Thank you for having me. Rochelle is our Rocky Knoll Administrator. I think it's been two, three months now? It has. I so quickly lose track of time. About two and a half. Two and a half months. She's been doing a wonderful job. And of course, today you're gonna get a chance to get to know Rochelle a little bit better, learn about her background and the very important work being done at Rocky Knoll. So again, it's wonderful to have you with us. Let's okay. start with the obvious. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background in the healthcare arena. Okay, well, I'm a registered nurse and I have been working in long-term care for Gosh, since the early 90s, I would say. And primarily, I worked at one nursing home for over 12 years and just kind of grew up through the ranks there. Had a mind for business and was recognized in that capacity and became the administrator at that home in the year, I think, 2000 it was. And then I ended up working for the corporate office and traveling to all of their other nursing homes in Wisconsin, and they have a total of 18 of them. So it was a really great experience to see a lot of different homes right. and work as interim administrators at many of those homes that were either in trouble or newly acquired and also doing mock surveys there. But more recently, for the last five years, I've been working at a hospital in acute care and really felt the, uh, the draw to get back into long-term care and realize what I was missing. So I'm just so grateful to be at Rocky Knoll. Yeah, well, we're glad to have you. So 12 years at a nursing yeah. home previously, then with a hospital for five, six years? Five years there. Five yeah. years there, and then back in the nursing home arena. That's right, yeah. yeah fantastic. Yeah. Well, what's your impression thus far of Rocky Knoll? How does it rank compared to the nursing homes you've worked with in the past? I honestly feel so blessed to be there, I really do. I had known of Rocky Knoll in the past and had been there a couple of times to the campus, but never inside. And each and every day as I drive to work, it's just, it's so majestic driving out 67 and up that hill, and the first thing you see is that water tower that says Rocky Knoll on it. And it's such a, a beautiful setting and beautiful building, and, and it's so impressive. And then you get to the building, and it's huge and expansive, and the land is gorgeous. And so, you know, just exterior impressions, amazing. And then you walk in the door, and the staff are just out of this world. They really are. They've been so welcoming. and. I feel, even though it's only been a couple of months that I've been there forever, it's just a very comfortable setting and uh, I'm getting to know more and more people there and wonderful. the residents. It's just been really wonderful. It is a beautiful setting. It is. You know, we take it for granted, I think, a little bit, but it's just gorgeous there. I love how they kept some of the old architecture with the, I don't know if you call them arches or towers, right, but they're right. just, I'm, I'm so glad that was preserved with the yeah. renovations over the years because that really adds a lot to the character. So a beautiful building, a beautiful setting, and as you said, the staff have been very welcoming, which is great to hear. Not a surprise. I know yeah. we have a, a lot of wonderful staff. And what about uh, your management team? I know you have a, a pretty experienced management team. How has that helped with the transition and getting acclimated? It's helped greatly. That They are a committed group of professionals, just amazing. And you're right about the tenure, just the, the uh, years of longevity there is just amazing. But it's really helpful for me because I can tap into their history. So any decisions that have been made, I can ask what's the rationale that was behind that or what's the history there and someone's inevitably got the answer there. So it really helps me in my acclimation here. And we just work really well together. I, I feel a mutual respect and appreciation and um, just a terrific team. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, fantastic. Yeah. So as you've gotten acclimated, getting to know your staff, the strengths and weaknesses and and uh, just all the resources available to you. I, I know that some good things have happened already in your short tenure, but what do you see as some of the key challenges that were before you, you know, the last two and a half months? I'd say challenges I could sum up in, in two terms, building and rebuilding, mm -hmm. really. Building in the actual building itself, as beautiful as it is, it's older, and there's a lot of, uh, structural and maintenance type of projects that are going on now that are big projects and costly projects, but necessary. And right. so we're working through some of that. Also related to building would be um, 
the older sections of the building are in need of uh, updating, mm -hmm. just to spruce them up and make them look more appealing. A lot of focus was put on the Woodland Village part, which is more short-term rehab, and, and that was necessary at that time. So now I'm looking forward to spreading some of that beauty over into the older parts and, and have the interior of the building just really shine. So those will be the two buildings. Rebuilding really relates to the culture and the team. There's um, been a lot of challenges in this past year at Rocky Knoll related to you know either budgetary issues or loss of personnel or turnover and it, that just creates some turmoil and a little bit of fear and mistrust in people. So we're really working right. on rebuilding that. Right. Yeah. Well, very good. And and then as you look ahead, as you think of the next year or so and, and goals that you've you know identified opportunities for improvement? What are some things you're aspiring to achieve in the year ahead? Certainly maintaining the course we're on. I, I think Rocky Knoll really has a lot of great things in place. I'm not looking to change a lot of what they're currently doing. Um, the services that are being provided there are uh, very inclusive of you know, a large gamut of folks who would need care coming to Rocky Knoll. So, so I think they're right on the mark with that. So I wouldn't really be looking to change that. Certainly getting a little bit more cemented in the things like I was talking about with team building and such. Um, but in addition to that, I would like to see um, more opportunities explored as far as efficiencies. I've been trained in Lean and Six Sigma and I'd really like to, um, and have so far done some, but even more, just to streamline what we're doing and to fine tune some of the processes and systems that are in place, which will help to uh, make us more efficient and create more time for people to do their jobs. And, right. Yeah. Outstanding, thank you. Roger. Uh, Rochelle, as you know, most of the counties um, of our state don't own and operate uh, a nursing home. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages of Sheboygan County owning and operating a nursing home? I think advantages are very clear in my mind as I'm acclimating because of the amount of resources that are available. So I can reach out to my brothers and sisters within the county organizations and certainly have done so. So the assistance that's provided, uh, say whether it's finance or IT or purchasing, you know, that you just have those other uh, departments that you can reach out to and hopefully we support each other in many ways and that's not something you would see in another environment. Disadvantages would probably be um, related to processes being slowed down a bit. So if you have an idea or something that you want to move forward, there's just layers of approval and processes. You know, it just slows it down a little bit. Uh, coming from the pr private sector, as you do, please describe uh, your impressions of working in the county uh, government environment. I guess you, you, you spoke a little bit of that already. So, yeah. You know, it, what was surprising to me is I think there are more similarities than there are differences, particularly in healthcare industry. And the reason I say that is because of the um, amount of regulation that comes from state and federal government is similar to all nursing homes across the board. So we're not any different in that regard. So we must still maintain all of those regulations. But um, as far as differences, I would say a level of uh, oversight and accountability, which is a real positive thing. So you've got that in the county government where you are um, accountable and, and ultimately accountable to the taxpayers as well. So that adds uh, certainly a lot to your conscience that you're making good decisions each and every day. And do you think the county can compete with the private sector? I know they can. Um, if I base that by one thing alone would be resident census. Rocky Knoll's census right now has been running in the 90s to high, low to high 90s, where if you look at our competitors in the market, they're struggling with census, and some even as low as 50% census. So that, that speaks to me pretty clearly that the community really recognizes um, the county-run facility as being a place where they want their loved ones to go. Uh, what's been your experience with bringing changes to facility and labor organizations uh, which represents a majority of the staff? It does. There's, there's two bargaining units at Rocky Knoll. One of them is the nurses and my experience with them has been so positive. Uh, I think they appreciate the fact that I'm a nurse and have walked in their shoes, mm -hmm. and that probably paved the way to a, a real um, nice welcoming and um, 
a lot of mutual respect there. So I've been getting along swimmingly with the nurses. The other group there, the local 2427, is a, a really large group of folks at Rocky Knoll. And um, they have new leadership there. They have a new union president and some stewards that have changed. And it's been so nice, um, the communication that's been taking place with that group where they feel completely comfortable walking into my office and chatting about issues and um, we just have a real good camaraderie. So I, I feel very positive with the unions, both of them. And the unions are relatively new to me. My, my past background, I had um, mixing, not mixing, uh, interactions I should say, with unions at a couple of the facilities that I was at for short terms, but never long term. So, so it was new for me and I just really appreciate how um, how educational and how welcoming they have all been. So I don't see, I don't anticipate problems. We've had labor management meetings and um, we chat and we, we work through problems and we certainly uh, celebrate successes. It's just been really positive. And uh, what's the total number of staff that you have out at Rocky Knoll and uh, what kinds of services uh, are provided? The staff is over 200. Um, I believe it's 205 when I last looked at a roster related to the United Way campaign. So then um, the services that we offer are many and varied um, from the short-term rehab, which really is a big focus for us. We still have traditional long-term care offered for folks who come there towards the end of their life. We specialize in dementia care and we also specialize in psychiatric care. And then the surface, uh, services that are provided for those people are um, therapy, both in-house and outpatient therapy. We have a, a really active activity department or life enrichment department that keeps people um, having lots of things to do throughout the day. They, those are a terrific group of people. Um, we offer hospice service for end of life care. Um, there's a chaplain in the building. We also have daily visits from a nurse practitioner so there's a lot of um, opportunities to see a medical provider on a daily basis if need be. Um, those are the ones that are occurring to me right now. Okay, thank you. you know, this discussion reminds me a little bit of a discussion I just had with my dad just this week. I have a 96-year-old grandmother that lives in assisted living, mm -hmm. and she's at a point now where I think she's going to need a higher level of care. And so we were just discussing this week, well, when do they, as as her children make that decision and, mm -hmm. and they're going to be visiting with their doctor uh, early next week to of course get some counsel on that but in your experience Rochelle you know for folks watching this program that have loved ones in assisted living and mm -hmm. of course there's many alternatives many people want to keep their loved ones at home as long as possible for obvious reasons but sure. if you're in assisted living and like my grandmother at 96, now needing more care, what generally are the signs or indicators that you may need a higher level of care, care such as Rocky Knoll? Well, safety certainly comes into mind primary, whether there's a fall risk or um, that she's feeling um, apprehensive being alone at night or, or not having licensed staff available 24-7. Um, a lot of the inroads that can be made earlier on with people in assisted living is to get them out and about and into the nursing homes to see them. It takes away that fear factor. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is to have um, opportunities for the community to come and be on site at Rocky Knoll for various functions and meetings. and. Um, it gets people in the door and they realize what it looks like and what it sounds like and what it smells like and it's not quite so frightening. You know, years ago we would tell our parents, I'll never put you in a nursing home. But then when it comes time that you have no choice, now you feel right. like you've betrayed them, where it's really not a bad thing. I, I tell my own mother, who very likely will be in a nursing home at some point, um, yes, you are going to a nursing home, but it's gonna be a great thing. You're gonna be able to have built-in socialization you're going to have all your care needs met. You will no longer have to manage your home, take your garbage out, wash your dishes, go to the grocery store. You know, all those things that, that don't really add to the, um, the fun part of life, the, the quality of life. But um, the things that do add to quality of life is all you really have to manage. So that's, you know, getting a good night's rest and knowing that you're safe and comfortable and having someone else manage your meds and your doctor will come right to you. All of those kind of built-in mm -hmm. comforts are right. there. 
So yeah. safety, of course, and you, and you just touched on some very important areas there. What about um, um, eating habits? You know, in assisted living, you don't have the, the number of staff, like you, as you touched right. on. And um, I know that in some points in people's lives, they're just not eating enough or getting enough right. nutrition. What would be the di difference in an assisted living environment versus a nursing home environment in that regard, a skilled care environment? Well, primarily a nursing home will have a dietitian okay. who reviews each and every person's nutritional status and that would be their lab work, their weights and their height, so their, their body mass index comparisons to um, what their di diagnoses are, what disease processes might be in place, what medications they're taking, and really evaluating what kind of a diet would be most advantageous mm -hmm. to them. So it might be a low salt, low sodium, you know, no concentrated sweets, whatever the case might be, that is best for that person. And we can institute a, a meal plan based on that. Very now, good. we also don't force people to eat that diet. So right. it's recommended, it's prepared, and it's available to them. But right. if a diabetic person sees the Boston cream pie and says, I want a piece of that, they're going to get it. So, right. so it's not so structured that they can't still... Um, have those things that are desirous to them, but we can offer the education and make recommendations. Gee, the Boston cream pie probably isn't in your best interest. We have some Jello that would you care for that? No, I still want the pie. Okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I wish I would have had Rochelle at the table this week because <laughs> those would have been helpful. I, I emphasize, we'll see what the doctor says. Right. Get an objective opinion, but you know, there, that time comes obviously when people have to make that difficult decision and. That goes back to the, the next question or trends in, in nursing home and, and skilled care. I've been here 14 years now. You've been here two and a half months, and, and Roger's been on the county board, I think, for over 30 years. Uh, start 29. 29. <laughs> Sorry to age you there, my friend. You know, nearly 30 years. So Roger's really seen the dynamics and the changes in nursing home care. We had three facilities when I started here. Comprehensive Healthcare Center, which was a grand old facility, was closed. Now it's, I think it was 2002 when that occurred. Mm -hmm. We put a $10 million addition on at Rocky Knoll to accommodate those residents, though many of them actually went to uh, more home like settings, you know, rather than a nursing home facility. But for those that did come to Rocky Knoll, they loved it because it was such a wonderful improvement and, and much better environment. Uh, Sunny Ridge Nursing Home, which obviously continues to provide service in this community, was county owned and operated in 2007. We privatized that facility. And so we remain with Rocky Knoll. And I know the three of us all take tremendous pride in the service and the level of care and the excellent work our team does at Rocky Knoll. But as you mentioned earlier, uh, it's not the norm for a county to own and operate a nursing home. My personal hope is Rocky Knoll is going to be providing service as a county-owned and operated facility for a long time to come. But when we look at the trends, you know, the trends we've dealt with in the last decade is in, in Sheboygan County, we were overbedded. I think there's still some concern in that regard. There's, you know, so many nursing homes that there may be more beds than we need. But also people are looking for different alternatives to a traditional nursing home, whether it's staying at home longer, going to assisted living, and then ultimately uh, a nursing home. What do you see here? You know, you're closer to it than I. This has been your, your line of work. What have you seen in trends the last, you know, five, 10 years? And then what do you see as you, if you had a crystal ball as we go forward? How have the dynamics of this industry changed? Mm -hmm. Well, you've nailed it, that people are um, staying in their homes longer. There's some terms being kicked around called aging in place which really allows for people to be in the, the comfort of their own home and have more services provided there up until that doesn't meet their safety needs any longer. So then as your grandmother's in an assisted living, you've got different layers of healthcare that are available to most people. Um, I say most people because a lot of assisted livings don't accept Medicaid or, or other finances, which tends to be the largest population base of most nursing homes. Mm -hmm. so, so those people do still fall through the cracks in our current um, environment, so they tend to come to nursing homes maybe sooner than other folks. Okay. Um, but ultimately, people 
tend to need to come to a nursing home at some point. Yeah. So what we're seeing is we get them later stage, later stage in that they're pretty darn depleted by the time we get them. So their right. care needs are higher. Right. Um, they've been holding on, and, and I understand that, and I respect that a lot. But I feel like if they had come sooner, we could have done so much with them in their final years, and, and they probably would have had a better quality of life. But, mm -hmm. but that's a very independent decision, and most right. people don't make that early. They make it when they have to. Right. Um, so in so. some cases, though, it may be you want to stay home as long as possible. I mean, who, who doesn't think that? I want to sure. be in my home my own home as long as possible, as independent as long as possible, but there are points where the quality of your life, how many visitors do you have, are your children near, are your friends and family near, and obviously at Rocky Knoll, what I appreciate each time I go there, whether it's to visit you or my mother, as you know, who's currently getting rehab there and loves it, is the community. There's community at Rocky Knoll. You can see the care between the staff and the residents, the, how they get to know each other all on first name basis, yeah. and the activities, as you mentioned. There are so many neat activities mm -hmm. that go on. We have On the Rocks, where you can get a drink with your yeah. loved one if they stop by, and it's, right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a warm community where I think the quality of life in some cases, perhaps in most cases, is, is better than it might be if you were at home and didn't have any of that going on. I believe that completely. In my previous role, I went out to people's homes and apartments and assisted living to assess them and talk to them about the need to come to a nursing home. And I, there was such sadness in that because I would see them in the environment that they were living in whether it was a really tiny little cluttered apartment with lots of safety hazards or I would look in their refrigerator, hardly any food there, or if they had meals on wheels or some other uh, way of getting food, it was old, that they didn't clear it out and weren't eating it well. And they would basically just wake up, sit in a chair, have the television on, sometimes not even the television, and just sit in the chair pretty much all day until it was time to go to bed. Right. You know, and that all alone, just that, that isn't living. Right. I had one of the sweetest little old ladies at a nursing home tell me, I didn't come here to die. I came here to live. Hmm. And then she went on and explained all the great things that were happening in her life on a daily basis. Like, I love bingo and I love going to church and so-and-so is my friend at my table. And, you know, she just really carried on. I would love to have had her on camera because she really, right. really did a good job of saying how she came there to live. And it was so truthful of many people. So when I see the the folks living in their own homes, which again, you want to support that up to a certain point. Right, right. But I, but I know if they could just come on in, we could help them. <laughs> we only have a few minutes left, but with the very important, you know, vital role that nursing homes provide and the, you know, the excellent service at Rocky Knoll or many of the other wonderful nursing homes we have in Sheboygan County, but they're so important to our circle of life. Why is it then that we are struggling financially. You know, why is it that so many nursing homes across the nation have gone out of business or closed? You know, what, what's your read there? Why are nursing homes struggling to continue to provide the important service that they do? Cost of care is just so high. Cost of medications is high. Many physicians still order what I would consider to be unnecessary diagnostics and labs and you know, just adds the cost go up, 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 and the nursing homes are only given a flat rate. So they receive a flat rate and yet they are having to cover all the expenditure that is required for that resident. So if we can control costs of taking care of that resident, I think we'd be fine. Right, which has been one of our key challenges, uh, certainly at Rocky Knoll, controlling costs. I think we've Absolutely. made tremendous progress over the years and of course, it's, you're going to be more successful operating one than three facilities uh, in Sheboygan County, so I, hopefully we're positioned for long-term success, but Medi Medicaid generally isn't sufficient to cover the, the cost of that care in many instances. Is that not the case? That can be the case. That can definitely be the case. Medicare, we receive more funding generally for those patients. It tends to be more lucrative from a standpoint of making sure we're covering the costs 
But right, and it's short term. Right. So Medicare goes away pretty quickly. Right. We also have to be really uh, cognizant of each patient we take in under Medicare as to what they're going to, their needs are going to cost as well, because that's a flat rate as well. But so as you look forward, I mean, this is some heavy things to consider here, and hopefully this has been valuable, if because we're all at some point, if if we're fortunate, going to need this type of care if we've, if we've li lived a long life or we have family members that are certainly going to be there. It's just so important. As you look forward with Rocky Nolan, you mentioned some of the good things that are in play already, but mm -hmm. you know, where do you see us five years from now? I, 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 the trends changing? Um, any, pre any predictions? There's so many unknowns with health care reform and um, I wish I had a crystal ball. I think at this point we need to stay the course with uh, managing our uh, expenditure and uh, certainly as you say we get we get a flat rate so let's try to live within those means and be frugal and yet always have a mind for doing the right thing for the residents. Right. Yeah. right. And um, if folks want to volunteer their time you know I know we have a number of wonderful volunteers throughout the county organization whether it's Health and Human Services but certainly at Rocky Knoll and uh, whether it's helping people with meal time or to and from or walks, I, you know better than I, but how can folks get involved if they want to come and, and brighten a resident's day? The best way to get involved is just to offer their time. They don't have to have a specialized program or come in with a fancy idea. Residents are just looking for time. They love to visit. The best part of my day is when I seek out a resident, sit down on their bed and just chat for a few minutes. and. I get more out of it than they do, but right. you know you can see the change. It's if they truly want to become a volunteer, there's a process. But just to spend time with an elder makes a huge difference in their lives. Right. right. And I know we have a foundation that's active at Rocky Knoll, and they do some good work. So if if folks are looking to make a donation to brighten up a residence day or do something that benefits the organization as a whole, there certainly is an avenue there as well. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, very good. Well, thank you for joining us. I hope you got a better appreciation for the very, very important work being done at our Rocky Knoll Healthcare Center. Uh, Rochelle Valeski, I know, would be happy to uh, talk to you if you had any questions about Rocky Knoll or services we provide or suggestions for improvement. But as you can see, we're, we're truly tickled to have someone like Rochelle on our team. And I know that as I've interacted with staff out there, there's just a real good feeling in that facility. So. Again, thank you for joining us. Next month, our Health and Human Services Director, Tom Egerbrecht, is going to be here to talk about the very important work that department does. We have the holidays approaching us, and I wish you all the best. So on behalf of Chairman Roger Distruti and the County Board, thank you for joining us.